Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I play a little game of this or that to get to know each other a bit better, and we talk about our sermons on spiritual gifts. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody. Episode number 43 of Armchair Preaching. 43. 43. We, we made the note that that was the, that was the presidency of George, George w. w. Bush. Bush. Yeah. I think we're or right. Isaiah 43, 19, that wonderful passage That's of, right. see, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? That's a lot more in keeping with the, yes. the tone of this, this, uh, <laughs> this podcast. podcast. Um, and, you know, just, just by side note, you know, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned, you know, Anna Burns had listened to both sermons. She had been in classic and then in Vine. And she said, yeah, you know, every week she listens to Armchair Preaching when she's walking walking the lake or doing her walk. So I thought, hey, you know what? That's great. And uh, I said, well, you heard we gave you a shout out. She said, no, I missed that one. I was like, well, you're not a true fan. Um, <laughs> anyway, this week uh, we, we were in the second week of a series called Serving Christ. Yep. And um, and uh, so we're into a very interesting set of topic uh, topics uh, on the spiritual gifts. But one of the things I wanted to do is we, you know, we've been introducing Pastor Rebecca uh, throughout the church the last several weeks. She's new. She was on the podcast a couple weeks ago. She'll mm-hmm. be on the podcast next week. Her first time preaching in Vine coming up this week coming up. So she's, she'll, she's been in uh, class. For the last two weeks, is a three weeks, three, three weeks, weeks, three assisting, weeks assisting, so. yeah. So she'll, and she'll be preaching in classic or Vine on the thirty first, and then classic on November seventh. Mm-hmm. So she'll be joining us in the armchair again. But one of the things that we did to do an introduction was we did uh, an intro video, yeah, uh, kind of more of an extended video, and then we did kind of a fun. It was like 60, 70 yeah. second video, this, this or that called this or that and people we posted it on facebook we posted it, it was on fun instagram it was fun. and it was fun you know it's and basically uh I think it'll be self-explanatory. You give two options, and the person uh, chooses one of the options. Of course, Rebecca cheated a couple times and gave through the olive option in uh, there. Olive right? option. Yeah. So, um, but we, I just thought when I was listening to us interview her with the this or that, I was like, I don't know the answers to some of these questions. And with John, and you know, you and I have been working together for uh, a couple, a couple of years, years yeah. and we've known each other for longer than that. So we're just going to play a little game of this or that. All right. I'm going to ask you. You ask me. Um, so I'm going to kick right. us off. All right. Sweet snack or salty snack? Hands down, uh, salt. I uh, do not have a sweet tooth. I man. have a salt tooth. You, uh. you, you give me. Uh, if you put a bowl of ice cream down there and you put a bowl of chips down there, I'll, I'll walk away from the ice cream and eat every one of those chips. <laughs> but wait, actually, put a put a bowl of pistachios down there. Oh my gosh, I lose my mind. Oh, pistachios! Wow, yeah, that's, yeah a, that's a that is the that is the salt snack to be in Dawson Island. Salt snack. Okay, yeah. I got one for you. Okay, uh, beach vacation or mountain vacation? Oh, mountains. I live in I live in Florida. I'm you know this seems weird. I am I'm not a huge beach person. I like the beach in theory. <laughs> <laughs> so I should say when we're staying on the beach, like if we're staying someplace where I can get. Out of the water, off the sand, and right into a shower, I'm good. Yeah, up in the air conditioner, overlooking the beach. Oh, that I love. Yeah. But the mountains, man, there's something about the mountains where you get to hike. And it, also, it's very different than where we yeah. live. We live in a very, you know, tropical-ish environment. It's hot. To be able to feel the mountain breeze, to find, you know, creeks running through different passes, to go hiking in those environments, to run across, you know, yeah. deer. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I love yeah. that. I love that. that. Feels like it feels like feels like you've had a change. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. Okay, so uh, pizza or pasta? No question. Pizza all day oh. long. <laughs> Mostly because I, for, I, you know, this is almost heresy. Uh, somebody, I, I said this in, in church one time in Dunedin, and I said that uh, I really don't like pasta. Oh, I don't like the taste. I mean, it's it's. I'll eat it. I'm. I, I, it's not like I don't gag on it. I just like. It's. I just don't crave it. Um, it doesn't hit my mouth and go. Oh, that's the best thing. Uh, so it says whatever. Even when we go over to like Scarpa's here, which is yeah, this fantastic Italian great. place, I don't get pasta. I get oh. something else. So, so if between pizza and pasta, that's uh, that's an easy one. And it's a really weird. I, I heard an audible gasp in church when I said I don't like pasta. You would have thought I said I don't like Jesus or something else. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, so I, so I, I lived in Italy for two and a half years. Oh, that's right. And so, that's right. Uh, and I worked at an Italian, yeah. Italian restaurant in high school. 
I, I love pizza. Do not get me wrong. Love pizza. But man, give me some pasta. I mean, the reality is that it, when you serve in the church as long as we've served yeah. in the church, you're pizzaed out, too. You, yeah, that's true. So so I, it's not that I love pizza even. I, I enjoy it. But yeah. you know, if you give me a choice between pizza and pasta, pasta I'll take pizza. Oh, man. Uh, I, yeah. I love pasta. I love pizza. It's really, you know, that's really tough for me. Give me, give me both. I'm going to put my hands together <laughs> on that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, walking... Or jogging or running. Okay, so oh, I'm see, I'm glad yeah, see, you I said. I had, had, had to throw that say, in there because I know I know you well enough to know. I we, need to throw that in there. Even though now I am a lot, a lot, a lot slower than I used to be, I still can't think of myself as a jogger. I'm a runner. Um, uh, now you, you're a runner too. Yes, you're a runner. So we share that. I I, I went to Florida Southern. I was a, a, a on the cross country team for a year and a half. Before. I see you guys out on the see the Florida Southern people out on the trail all that, the time. They're the team down the trail way fast. That, that, that you know I used to be that fast at one point. I used to be one of those guys who could run five fifteen miles for six miles in a row. Uh, I can't run a five fifteen mile on my bike now. So um, <laughs> on your bike. But I started I started running when I was in um, uh, you know late late childhood early adolescence really at fifteen I started running um, to get in shape to play basketball which I know is hilarious to people when I say I was on the basketball team but it's true and I wanted to be faster. I love how you pick on yourself with that too. You've told several basketball stories in church, yeah, you know, and you're always very self effacing. Like I know you think of basketball when you think of me, but yeah, well I'm listen point I know, guard. That's what point guards were for. But still five six is still it's uh, still short. Your vertical leap was four feet. So that's what can we say? I I was at one point really close, but yeah, I love to run, man. And I, I, I miss, um, I miss the super long distances I used to be able to do. I don't get to run the super, super long distances. Anything above like five miles is a real struggle. Um, there are times where I get closer than that than others, but you know, age kind of hits me, has hit me hard. I put a lot of miles on my legs when I was younger. Um, and that, you know, so I just do what I can. I run with my son now, which is a real blessing, yeah, which is fun. also slowed me down quite a bit. Um, although he's catching up and a couple of days ago, I was like, dang, he, you know, I'm got to step it up now. He's starting to <laughs> actually push me a little bit. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's great. That's great. No. So what about you about a beach or, or mountains? You're from Florida. So yeah, from Florida, but uh, because I'm cold natured, uh, going to the mountains, I love the experience of going to the mountains. And um, yeah, I did a pastor's retreat, uh, the, the Credo uh, exp- retreat uh, mm-hmm. a few years ago. And one of the guys was from Montana and brought his fly fishing set, set and mm-hmm. let me, he showed me how to fly fish and I was killing it on the fly fishing. Mm-hmm. So I loved that. But I would prefer the beach all day long because it's warmer. Yes, yeah. it's warmer. And, uh, and now, now I'm not. Also, I'm also not going to be one of those guys like you. I don't want to sit out there and bake like a yeah. yeah. Seal always. My wife always laughs laughs about. She says, "I feel like when I sit on the beach and I put you know, suntan lotion on, the wind blows and the sand gets all over you." She said, "I feel like breaded chicken in the <laughs> oven." So I don't want to have the breaded chicken in the oven experience. But to be around there, we can be at a be yeah. at a condo, be on the be on the water, we go to the pool, go to the beach, uh, have the warmth, and ha- it, that, that's that's my happy spot. Yeah, so. I do. I do love a good walk on the beach. Oh yeah, at, especially at night. There's something about walking on the beach at night because. You know, Especially on the Atlantic side, yeah, on where the you Atlantic get, we side. get the coast, uh, they yeah. get the waves. Yeah, I love that. And, and there are there are still a few places in Florida, although the, these are vanishing places where you can still find places on the beach where there the 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 light pollution is way way down, oh, and so you can stars see the stars. Oh. It's it's rarer and rarer um, where you can find a place like that. Mo- so many resorts and all that now. Which, we, had a, we had a hint of that this morning. I don't know if you were out this morning. Uh, the stars yeah. were hanging down uh, significantly lower. I reached up and grabbed a few this oh, morning. Man. That was, was kind of nice. I know and, what you're talking about. And that was on a run. Were you running this morning? I was running this morning. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, so that was a little fun. We'll do that from time to time. Yeah. I think it's great for people to kind of get that. So, and it also. I, mean, get, I want to ask you one. I, okay, I, I go, go for you. Um, sweet or salt, ice cream, potato chips. Where, where are you oh, on that geez. spectrum? Everything. I, unfortunately, all the above. One of the reasons. <laughs> one of the reasons I'm significantly slower than I used to be is because I say yes to everything like ah, that, man. Okay. Um, I. I mean, you said potato chips and ice cream. I'm thinking you could dip the potato chips in oh, the ice they, cream. They are a combination. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do usually do that but if i get a bag of chips i can crush a bag of chips i can just crush it we don't we try not to keep that stuff in the house right because for that very reason i can crush a bag of chips and i can crush a pint of ice cream 
in no time. It's really, really sad. You uh, and your friends Ben and Jerry, or yeah, me, yeah. my friends Ben and Jerry and Hagen and Dies. We're we're very tight. Well, no. I, I know how you feel about Tootsie Pops. I've heard that heard that story already. <laughs> which is yeah, which is where we were at this week. You know, we we talked about uh, spiritual gifts this week, and you know, once again, you know, you and I, we we talked. We now this this it, week we talked. We have said in the past that we don't talk a whole lot about the messages beforehand, and part of that is because. W- you know the the unique the unique aspect of our preaching ministry here at FPC is that people can get a different perspective. Yeah. But because of the nature of spiritual gifts, and you mentioned it quite a bit, I mentioned it as well in my message. The nature of how different denominations treat the con- the concept and the the category of spiritual gifts. We did talk yeah. about our view of spiritual gifts. So. T- t- tell me a little bit about kind of so your history with uh, engaging spiritual gifts. Your um, so we were just back up. We were in First Corinthians twelve. So there are other lists of spiritual yeah. gifts. We were specifically in First Corinthians twelve, Peter, yeah. yeah, in verse eight. And so, what's your history been with spiritual gifts? You, you mentioned a little bit about it in the message, but yeah, if there's any more to dig into as well. No, I, it was one of those topics, you know, coming out of the. Coming into the church, growing up Roman Catholic, not really having getting anything out of it, I really came in with a blank slate for the most part. I mean, I knew a few stories and all, but and then people started talking about uh, uh, spiritual gifts. I think there's a future clarification for you and me to do yeah. in some format with blogs or with a preaching series or something like that. I even had a comment afterwards saying the, the comment was something about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I said hold the, hold that thought. Yeah. We're coming back to that one in this very series, but. The, the confusion for me early on was fruit of the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's the clarification I think that would be worthwhile because wow. I remember having that early in the early days of me being a, a Christian. And so, so, so one by one, I began to, to knock, knock those off. So I began to experience, uh, talk about the spiritual gifts. And I remember probably the first, the first biggest um, conversation that I had was somebody met me in a post office. I was in a post office, and somebody, and I said I worshipped at a Presbyterian church, and they said, oh, you're a cessationist. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, Which is they, what you and I talked about quite yeah, a bit. Yeah. Yes. So they skipped right over predestination, yeah. election, and all the other things that they typically think of when they think of a Presbyterian. And, you know, my first reaction is no well yes yeah, first off I'm a Christian let's, yeah, start, let's start there start there and then uh, but they wanted to, they wanted to go straight into whether or not the tradition that we were part of believed that spiritual gifts continue to be given in the church um, and so I really began to dig in at that point and that's I, that probably was the the moment where I said okay I'm going to get serious about that yeah yeah and so you know that's probably 20 something 27 years ago or so yeah yeah and see when i was so you know i was not raised presbyterian i came to a presbyterian uh presbyterianism um after i was already in in you know ministry a a little while i went to um, reform theological seminary and the question really does come up that cessationist versus continuation there's a there's there's such a wide range of thoughts on it and you you made it a lot more explicit in your your sermon that the 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 argument against the continuation of the spiritual gifts, it, it's really not based on anything biblically solid. I, and I, I, and you and I had the conversation. I went looking. I, mean, I went looking yeah. just to, before, I, you know, before you make a level of statement like that. Yeah. You know, I, went, I went looking at cessationist arguments again, mm-hmm. and they were, they were using reason yeah. and, and loosely some scriptures here, but nothing explicitly uh, biblical warrant for that that language. So I said, "There's just no, there's just no warrant for that." Yeah, and I, and 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 you when you went, I came to your office to talk about where you were going with it, and that was one of the questions you had. Well, where do you? Because we've never talked about. It's not yeah. one of those things that you typically talk about. But amongst Presbyterians, amongst people in our own tribe. That's a pretty wide. There is a pretty wide yeah. range in that, and that and it was an important conversation for you and I to have. So that we're we're about to go preach the same passage on the same day on the same subject. Mm-hmm. We ought to figure out where each other uh, are on that. And yeah. as as has turned out so many times when you and I talk about things, we were in the same place. Yeah, yeah, and 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 so you know, I think I think it's important for people to understand that. But what what both of us kind of centered around. For the majority of the conversation, majority of the sermon was one: these gifts are for the Lord, from the Lord, and they're for the Lord. It, it's we we both hit it pretty hard to say these are not things that you just get to use for yourself and your own glory, um, your own ego boosting, 
Um, these are things that have been given to you for the common good of the church, mm-hmm. the glorification mm-hmm. of God. So I want to I want to ask a little bit about how you've seen um, how you've seen the expression of spiritual gifts and people. And I don't want to call anybody out, but have you seen people that you you know they have a spiritual gift? But they, the, they're. It's hard to say that they're using it for the glory of God, uh, and they're using it uh, for the building up of themselves. I mean, not not that there's to name names or to call anybody out. But we've we've been in we've been in church a long time. You know, we've been in ministry a long time. I can't. Uh, you know, I can't speak for um, other church traditions, but I can say that the churches that I have been exposed to, both uh, in the churches and as either worshiping in the churches or leading in the churches, or churches that I know about from other traditions, um, I, I'll say it in this most general way. I think most people are not aware, A, of spiritual gifts, or B, what their spiritual gifts are. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I actually, I began my message by saying something similar. That, you know, they're either not aware mm-hmm. of, the, of the subject of spiritual gifts, they're not aware of what their spiritual gifts are, or they've heard of them and they're like, well, "What do I do with speaking in tongues? Yeah. What am I supposed to do with that?" And so they think because you have speaking in tongues as a as a gift, then everything, all the rest of them, must be weird or untouchable. Or yeah. what do you do with those as well? So my experience with it, for the most part in the churches, has been um, been been almost a bewilderment or like or, or, mm. or a, a curiosity of you know what do I do with that topic rather than uh, a, a large number of people who have said yeah I've really studied about this and I've mm. really engaged with this and I have found that to be a very meaningful part of my spiritual journey because now I've realized that the spiritual DNA that I've been given. Is I'm a I'm a helper, yeah, or I'm a I'm a discerner, or I'm a whatever yeah. the, my gift is. How yeah. about you? What what's been your back background with it? Well, so you know, like I said, we we you know, I grew up United Methodist Church. The spiritual gifts are talked about some there. My my real first experience with the whole concept of spiritual gifts came when I was at Florida Southern, um, and I told you the story. You know, we we had uh, there were a lot of student ministry, student led. Um, ministries at Florida Southern, and uh, one of them was a, was a much more charismatic, and and most of their meetings were largely speaking in tongues in the definition of the ecstatic, unintelligible mm. sort of um, spontaneous, you know, not your cultural divide uh, language that you used in the sermon, which I thought was great. Not yet. Not the cultural divide part, which, again, you know, when I said it in the sermon, I think sometimes people say, oh, well, Zach just puts tongues in that category. No, 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 no. The category is a lot wider than just what I mentioned. I did mention the ecstatic and the spontaneous. The problem that I, I, and I, and, and we both said this, and I think this is really tough because it's, when you're talking about spiritual gifts, you don't. You, you we want to be very careful not to disparage other faith traditions that are in that are Christian, you know, faith traditions. But the 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 sign of salvation being the speaking of unintelligible tongues as a litmus test for salvation. That is really borderline Pharisaical, and really, and I. I so I say that that might was my really first kind of experience with it. Were Um, you thinking that thought at the time when you were experiencing that that these people are are making, speaking in tongues, Zach, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not a real Christian, that there's a bit of a judgmentalism or Pharisee-like behavior? Oh, yeah. Well, in fact, you know, the the ministry that I was a part of, um, this other ministry, and I had friends in that ministry, don't give me, there were great godly people in there, but they even went so far as to kind of, you know, spread you know this this idea that the ministry that I was a part of was not really believers because we didn't practice speaking in tongues. I mean that to that level. So there, but again, when you go into those situations, it felt a lot less like it felt a lot less like the recognition of the spirit of God for the building up of the people of God. It felt a lot more like showiness. That's how it felt. Now I could be discerning the spirit wrong. Another spiritual gift that Paul mentions. I could be. Totally off base, but it, that's the sense that I got in those moments. Yeah. And and but you do, you, but you do tap into. And I wonder if if in those very settings, because I've been around those settings as well. If in those very settings, if the person who is speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, doing the miracles, healings, whatever it is, would be able to articulate that the gift itself is is for the building up of the church. And yeah. here's how. Yeah. Yeah, and my, my my experience is more like these things are being done 
to do them because these things are important to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't argue that. I'd just say, what, but there's actually a larger purpose that, that you're not talking about here that, that, is, that is the biblical purpose. And you and I both hit it hard, and you started with it. We hit it hard. It's like, hey, it's, about, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the miracles. It's not about the discerning. It's not about the evangelism. It's about the church. Mm-hmm. The common good. The, the common good. The building up of the church, the glorification of God. It's not about the gift itself. And one of the things, the commentaries I read, and it was – it was interesting, and, and I, um, I wish I could remember which commentary it was at the moment, but the, they pointed out the fact that you know the Holy Spirit's role is not for the sake of even the Holy Spirit's recognition. The Holy Spirit's role is to point people back to Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's it's that you know it's the 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 high priestly prayer. It's the John you know passages where Jesus is is talking about the Helper and what does the Helper do? The, what does the the Paraclete do? It reminds the disciples of Jesus everything that Jesus has taught. It's not for itself. And and the the commentary I read actually went a little further and says those churches that call themselves Spirit led are actually missing the point. Yeah, because yeah. the spirit should not should lead you no other place than to Jesus. Jesus, um, and New, it's not as though there's a competition. New in the scholar, yeah. D- uh, Dale Bruner, whom I think you, yeah. we we both heard him speak, and uh, his son and I went to seminary together. But he he called the Holy Spirit the shy member of the Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, it's not about me. I'm always going to be pointing pointing somewhere else. So I I, I love that. that the, if a church is specializing in emphasizing the Holy Spirit. Then you're sort of missing the point of what the Holy he, Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he's doing in, in his life. His, his job is to point us back to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and that's what the gifts are supposed to do too. You know, not to draw attention to itself, but to draw attention to Jesus Christ, the building up of the church. So, you know, one of the things I did in the message was I talked about some of the more common, ordinary ways that you can see. Yeah, I like that. The gifts demonstrated. Um, but we we also have talked about some of those miraculous or supernatural, obviously supernatural displays, um, and we we've seen it in our own ministries. Um, so, it, tell me, talk about a time where you explicitly remember looking at a moment and going, uh, "This is this is a gift of the miracle right mm-hmm. here." You know, whether it was you or somebody else acting in that capacity, but you've been in places where that's really sure. been the case, and there's no other, there's no other explanation but then the power of God. Well, none of the none of the more you know, at one level, there's lots of them that happen when anytime someone's going in for a, a surgery and there's some there's some unusual uh, actions that come yeah. out of the surgery that is unusually less damage done or unusually quick healing things like that. But I tell you one one that I point to, and and I was thinking through this as it's going through the sermon. You know how you illustrate a sermon comes up again. I was thinking, mm-hmm. okay, but what we're talking about is a person with the gift of healing. Yeah. And so I don't know that this necessarily is tied to that person. I would declare that person or myself had that gift of healing. I just know that because of what happened in that in that moment, a a very a pretty dramatic thing happened as a result of it. And, that, and I, I think about a, a basketball player in college who came to us and in a church service, and we had a we had a moment where we can have prayers for healing, and they, mm-hmm. and she came forward, and we laid on hands and 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 prayed for her, and I didn't see her for another two weeks, and she had a ruptured. Um, uh, calf muscle, and Ooh. so she was captain of the captain of the team. wasn't going to be able to play her last game, and it was I mean, all, uh, not quite crutches, but she was hobbling mm. badly, and it was it was a ruptured, like a ruptured muscle. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see her for two weeks or three weeks or so, and I finally saw her, and I said, I said, but Jada, what ha- what happened? Mm-hmm. Like I, we we prayed for you. How did it How did it go? And she was she did this little stop and here, <gasps> Pastor John. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you all laid your hands on my shoulders. She said, I literally, I don't know how else to describe it, I felt electricity. Mm. That's not the first time I've been told that either. Mm -hmm. I felt electricity, it felt like electricity moved through my body and settled on my injured calf. Mm -hmm. And I walked out stronger. Mm -hmm. And she said, that was on a Sunday. And on Wednesday, I scrimmaged. And on Saturday, I played. Wow. And I was out for the season. Wow. 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 And uh, she said, I, "I'm telling you, I experienced a a healing that mm. that there was no doctor around. Mm-hmm. I experienced a healing from God." Mm. I was like, "Wow, that's 
pretty amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So yeah. that's a that is one that comes to. I always think back to that because mostly because it's so fun to see her see her you know, excited. She forgot to tell me about it, and well, then when she finally saw me three two three weeks later, she's like, "Oh my gosh, let me tell you about this." Well, that brings up one of the points that you you brought up in your message, and I think it's something I it, which not, we didn't um, we, neither one of us really dug into. But one of the things that you and I talked about in your office when we were, you know, why don't we see more of that today? And at what point do yeah. we see those types of things, those yeah. hear, healings, those miracles, the the uh, the extraordinary acts of faith? I mean, there are acts of faith, right? And I mean, I've been in moments where. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of events, a lot, plan a lot of outreach events, and I cannot tell you how many out, every ministry event that, you know, for 20 years, there have been so many moments where people said, you know, it's going to rain, we're going to have to cancel this. And the, I've had one that I've had to cancel because of rain, and that was actually just last year. It was the first time where, I mean, the radar, everything says it's going to rain. I'm like, no, it's not going to rain. God, you know, this God's got, this is his event, right? Um, but people wonder why aren't there more, you know, stand up, take your mat and walk kind of mm-hmm, moments. Mm-hmm. And we, we both talked about this a little bit as when when do those things happen and why? And uh, so I get, get your take on that. Just expand on that a little bit if you can. Yeah, I was just trying to th- think about because I-, I think we illustrated it uh, differently, but we both talked about the fact that, I mean, you talked about the, the gifts, stories of the gifts of healing. I just told one mm-hmm. a moment ago, you, uh, you have t- that, that yeah. in those 20 years of outreach events, you've got stories uh, as well. And then you also talked about the medical treatments of the day as being modern day, modern day miracles, because if this, these would have happened 2,000 years ago, the people would have been, they'd lost their minds. Oh, lost their minds. It would have just been unbelievably good. So we, we see it as fairly routine, but it is still, when you think about it, still yeah. m- miraculous that this, is, this type of thing happens uh, today. So so you know, th- that th- that's a reality to be able to say, because I know my, my first point to answer the question, my first point is that who says it's not happening? Exactly. For those who say that it's, why doesn't it happen? I say, well, uh, well who says yeah. it's not? I <laughs> yeah, I, I see it. Yeah, you know, but maybe we don't see it in the in the same way that pe- people are seeing it. But I I can't. T- I, it's probably you know, three or four times a month that we would hear something that has happened. And said, you know, there's no explanation for this mm-hmm. other than God. Well, and even in those moments where we point to it and say, people say, oh, well, that's science, that's medical, whatever. You know, the, our our response is. Yeah, but God is still sovereign over the medicine, and you know what? It, why is it that one patient has chemotherapy treatments that that work mm-hmm. brilliantly, and another patient has the same cancer, same diagnosis, and and it doesn't? Well, you know, it's it's it, did the medicine not work? There's some, yeah, but whatever. It, God is sovereign in those moments, right? And and God always. There, this is where we as Presbyterians, we always have, we, we do have some question answers that we have for, for different questions is the providence of God is, is an expression of the grace of God. And so those, those moments that even we can feel like we can explain away with science and medicine, it's still God's sovereignty. Mm-hmm. It's still God's control. It's still God's providential care and his grace demonstrated in a broken world. And we experience the brokenness and God overruling the brokenness to me is always miraculous. To me, it's always miraculous. Whether it's spectacular is well, that, different. Yes, because uh, I mean, I, I still like uh, Wayne Grudem and his systematic theology. And his definition of, uh, of of a miracle is um, he said some of the definitions of, of a miracle say it's the supernatural work of God in this world. Mm-hmm. And so, well, God's supernatural hand is always at work in this world. Always, yeah. So if He's always at work in this world, and sometimes His supernatural hand, His hand of healing, His agent of healing, is going to happen through uh, medical doctors, mm-hmm. and medical uh, procedures. But he's, Grudem says that a miracle is an, is an unusual display of God's supernatural work in this world. Yeah. 
And that's the part where you go, oh, wow. That's, and that's the, the, what, what people are looking for. Why doesn't the pick up your mat moment happen where we see somebody whose hand, whose hand moves from being withered, broken yeah. and withered and crippled to being whole, whole and, and, and yeah. healed? Why doesn't that happen? That certainly would be a miraculous uh, healing. And mm-hmm. I can't say that I have – I mean, I think the story I told just a moment ago is the closest I have to something yeah. like that. And it feels awfully close yeah. to that kind of a, a moment. So, so even that, I, it, it's, it does happen in yeah. this world. Yeah, um, and some people are just gonna, you know, they could see it happen before their very eyes, and there's 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 zero eyes to see that what they just saw is what they just saw. Yep, and that's because faith in and of itself is a gift. I mean, even even saving faith is a gift of God, yeah. and it takes the eyes of faith to see God's hand at work in the spectacular and in the ordinary. One of my favorite things to see is that is that grinning. Knowing look, not showy, but just grinning, knowing looks. That I, I know what just happened. Yeah, on the part of a Christian who's just had seen something extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how many cancer patients do we talk to who have such a faith in Jesus Christ, and they and I. I friends of ours in this church who had cancer, and and I've talked to them on the phone. It's like I just don't know how people go through this. Without, without Jesus Christ, because even that that Philippians four peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That is in of itself um, an effective act of God's power. Yeah. That that's what the the word miracle in that First Corinthians twelve literally means. That people can have peace in circumstances that do not make sense for them to have peace. Um, they see it because they have the eyes of faith. I, I love how you and I both went. Two chapters ahead, mm-hmm. we both went to First Corinthians fourteen, 14 yeah. to help to help deal with the look back on the, the on on First um, Corinthians twelve. Yeah, and uh, and and I think we we did the same thing with it. Mm-hmm. It's just that you know p- part of what the saying is that the the gifts themselves, the the, the ecstatic gifts of the, the the speaking in tongues, one type of tongues, mm-hmm. um, is not actually preferred. Yeah. If yeah. you think about it in the ordinary life of, of, of an ordinary church, which is in a well-evangelized community, which obviously in, in the New Testament it was all about evangelism, mm-hmm. so that's a different culture altogether. But you, we are in a – we are in a um, – a, 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 in spite of all the, the decli- declining numbers, I mean, mm-hmm. we might get to this place where we'd be more like a first century church, but yeah. we're not n- nowhere near the place of a yeah. first century church. Um, that that the, what's needed is it's not even so much that the spiritual speaking in tongues is is for unbelievers as much as it is speaking in intelligible tongues and, and words that people understand, words of truth from God. That is what is needed. Yeah. You know, it's not so much that we don't need that for for the unbelievers, but but what is needed is the discernible, intelligible tongues, yeah, the spoken word of truth, and um, and I think we both went to that. Were you? Yeah, I mean, to me, I think that's. I mean, I think one of the things that the gifts are are for are constantly to again, it's it's back to that point, people to Jesus, right? And so, in the unintelligible tongues for the church in in Corinth, and in, in when Paul's talking about it in chapter fourteen, you know. He's really thinking about folks that they they have no basis for faith otherwise, right? Yeah. So they need something that is so out of the ordinary that grabs their attention. And 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 one of the things too, and I mentioned this a little bit that you know they're talking about a, a very different type of context, right? They're very different. They're dealing with pagan idolatrous people. So they're non-believers are non-believers not because they're not religious, not because they're atheists, not even because they're practical atheists, it's because they, they worship in entirely different ways and have entirely different philosophies. So there's a there's a grabbing of attention that needs to take place in, in that context. And so, um, yeah, the First Corinthians 14 passage is really, really interesting. Um, and it really speaks to the larger, a lot of the problems that were going on in the church in Corinth, because they had a lot of problems. Um, we did a series, I don't know, about five years ago, just on the church in Corinth, because there was so much obvious brokenness. I mean, some of the, the stuff that Paul has to address about some of the sexual immorality things well, well, that are happening. It makes perfect sense when you just just walking down the streets in Corinth, you're exposed to it. All uh, sorts it, of stuff. It, much in the same way that an American culture is exposed to hypersexuality. Absolutely. Just 
not walk the, the equivalent of walking down the street is turning on the television or turning yeah, on the internet. That's right. That's right. And you know what? It's again back to where we're at. We're serving Christ through the church for the building up the common good. This week, um, Pastor Rebecca and you are jumping into another difficult topic. Can't uh, wait to hear yeah, it. Yeah. A spiritual warfare, which yeah. I think is going to be great. Like I said at the beginning, uh, Pastor Rebecca is going to be in Vine. You're going to be in classic back classic. in classic again. Yeah. And uh, so, if, if, you, if anybody has missed any one of the sermons. Um, um, we encourage you, go to our website, fpclakeland.org, go to the sermon archives, check us out there. And if you've missed any one of our po- uh, armchair preaching podcast episodes, we encourage you go back to the archives, Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud. We have links on our website. Be sure to subscribe, like, share it with your friends. It has been, uh, people have been telling me more and more. They're listening to it. They love the interaction and it drives people back to the messages that they may not have heard so that they get a fuller picture of the sermon. No such, way such can... a great chance for you and I to continue to talk about our favorite topic, which yeah. is to continue to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ right. and point people to Jesus. Yeah. Well, thank you once again, Pastor John. And uh, for uh, doing a little this and that, mm, oh, first yeah. thing. And, Let's um, go eat some we'll, pizza. <laughs> we'll go do that again. <laughs> uh, we hope to uh, see everybody real soon. And thank you once again, Pastor John. Thank you.